Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Thursday, March 7th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game in 177 days. The game against Michigan in 268 days. The Buckeyes will be back on the practice field at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center on Thursday morning. We will be there as well. Tony, Kevin, and I, I think of Mark as well, should have the full crew there covering Ohio State's second practice of the spring. We'll have video. We'll have photos. We'll have a full practice report. We'll probably do a live show after practice and after interviews. Should be a full day of content for you coming out of practice number two of spring football at Ohio State. You can find that all at BuckeyeHuddle.com and YouTube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. All right. Well, that's what's going on later today. Let's talk a little bit about more about what happened earlier this week. Practice number one for the Buckeyes. Afterwards, we got a chance to talk to Ohio State head coach Ryan Day. Had a lot of interesting, interesting things to talk about. Seems like every time we talk to Ryan Day, a lot of stuff has happened since the last time we spoke to him. So there's a lot of stuff to get caught up on. Today, we're going to get caught up on some of that stuff. Let's start with the fact that, hey, they have a new offensive coordinator since the last time we talked to Ryan Day. That offensive coordinator's name is Chip Kelly, of course. He is known for always having one of the best rushing attacks in all of college football. So how much impact does Chip Kelly bring to the run game plan for Ohio State this year? Uh, yeah, huge, a huge part of it. Uh, I think the great thing for he and I is that um, you know, we see things the same way. Uh, but I think to your point, um, you know, he brings a background of, of running the football that um, you know is really impressive, and uh, certainly we know what we need to do to run the football. But I think he's excited about you know the guys that we have. Um, I think some of our guys up front have had really good off season, so excited to see how the, the offensive line develops over these six, uh, fifteen practices. Um, but also you know the running backs that we have, um, and, and all of our quarterbacks are mobile, so I think that that's significant as well. Uh, but but it's been great, you know, it just early on to you know sh exchange ideas of things that have gone on the last few years for him, things that we've done here, and you know as we go, what's going to be right for Ohio State, we'll continue to develop that. One of the big pieces of news to come out of practice number one for the spring was that Sunny Styles has, in fact, as we've been kind of talking about and speculating about for weeks now, has in fact moved from the safety group to the linebacker group. That does not mean that that's where he is permanently. That just means that was where he was day one. But okay, Ryan Day, what was the thought behind moving Sonny Styles to the linebacker? Yeah, we want to, um, you know, put guys in position to be the most successful they can, but also embrace it. And, and Sonny, uh, you know, has wanted to, you know, do whatever he can to, to help the team. And uh, we know that his skill set uh, is versatile, and we're going to continue to work on that. Uh, but but you will see him at linebacker. Um, you'll also see some do, do some other things as time goes on, but. Uh, we think uh, you know he brings a lot to the table there. Um, he can do so many different things, and um, and I think that's again the exciting part year in and year out is you have different different people in different spots, and then you have to figure out how you want to utilize them the best. Today was just day one, real basic, uh, but he was working at linebacker today, so we'll watch the film and and continue to build his package. The addition of Chip Kelly is going to bring a lot of interesting things to the Ohio State team this year. It also brings a really interesting dynamic because. Chip Kelly has been Ryan Day's coach, then he was his mentor, he was his boss, and now Ryan Day is Chip Kelly's boss. So how is that going to work this year? And I, and I think the other part of it is, is, you know, we've been friends and we continue to be friends. And I think that's probably um, the thing that over the years, you know, we're both very, very competitive. Um, you know, I could tell you stories, not right now, about when I played or even when we've coached. Uh, but then, you know, when when the meeting gets over, we get off the field, we're hugging it out, and there's a lot of love there. Um, I owe um, much of where I am at right now uh, to him. Um, and so this isn't about, you know, any of that as opposed to, you know, um, a couple guys part of a great uh, program right now that are trying to go chase some great goals. And um, yeah, he's been great. Um, you know, he's really... Uh, done a great job already of connecting with a bunch of the the staff members and coaches, but more importantly the players. And um, it's going to be fun journey to go on, but it's going to be uh, competitive every day. And that's one thing that he's always done, and something I've always admired about him, and and the ability to adapt over time and change. And um, so yeah, already it's been it's been you know fun to come to work every day because you know you're going to get challenged. Um, but even more, as you look ahead to you know this spring, this preseason, as we get into the year, you know where where is this team going to be? What's the journey look like? Uh, what's the offense look like? Um, 
but uh, but so far it's it's been um, you know enjoyable to come in and you know be able to step out of the room and know that you know there's a bunch of guys in our room that are grinding on it that are going to get it right. There was a lot of talk about the fact that Ryan Day probably needed to take a step back from the more nitty gritty stuff with the quarterbacks and the offense and just kind of be more of a program CEO and. That's probably going to be a good move for him and for the Ohio State program, but it does mean that he's giving up his role as somewhat of the quarterback guru, the person who asked this question, called him the quarterback whisperer. So he, he's, is he now handing that baton to Chip Kelly? You know, Chip is is coaching the quarterbacks, and and you know, so much of what I learned was from him, and and vice, you know, we we work together in so many different areas, and and then you know, I coach for him, and and even. Um, you know, it's with the with the Eagles and with the 49ers and, and with him. You know, there's just a lot of back and forth there, and so there's a lot of conversation. And um, so I'll still be very much uh, involved, but certainly, you know, Chip is running it. He's going to run the meetings. He's going to do all those types of things. But um, but there's a lot of give and take there as well. A lot of conversation. And um, but it's it's you know it's a good group of quarterbacks. You know, they're um, you know they they they've got really good leadership. They've had a really good off season. I think you know all the feedback we're getting from Mick has been very, very positive. Um, you know, we, I think we, we counted up between seven on seven and team reps. I think we had 150 reps today, and that's that's a bunch, and that's great because that's what these guys need. And the more we can spread those around, the better. That quarterback room is full of talented players this spring. They've got five scholarship guys, all of whom have either starting experience elsewhere, or come in, came in as five star prospects, or have really gotten some really, really good, good reviews early from the Ohio State coaching staff. So when you've got five guys, none of whom have even 100 snaps at Ohio State, how do you divide up the reps this spring without having anyone among those five guys with a lot of game reps at Ohio State? Well, I think, like I mentioned, we're trying to get as many as we can. If we can get 150 a day, that's that's going to you know, be a little bit different maybe when the pads are on. But um, the more we can get, the better, because these guys all need those reps. And then we'll put a body of work together and kind of figure out, you know, probably halfway through the spring where guys are at and keep going from there. Um, so I think the key is right now we have the ability, because of um, mid-years and, and those type of things, to have a pretty full roster um, where maybe in the past in the spring – um, you know, a few years back, before we had so many guys at mid-year, the transfer portal was wasn't where it's at right now. Um, the preseason roster would look a lot different than the spring roster. Now, it's you know, there's only going to be a few, a handful of guys that actually um, you know come in during the summer. So we're able to get three three groups uh, reps and equal reps. So again, it all comes down to those reps and making the best of them. The quarterback position is getting a lot of the attention this spring. But maybe one of the most important positional battles is the one uh, for the open offensive line spot. Matt Jones, the right guard, left after last season, completed his eligibility off to the NFL. So how are the Buckeyes going to fill that spot? Well, there's a whole bunch of different possibilities. One of them that we saw on Tuesday was Luke Montgomery. Very, very talented second-year player. He, we had talked about maybe he would slot in at right tackle, and they kicked Josh Fryer inside. Well, they're starting Luke Montgomery inside at right guard. They're looking at him there first. So what does Ryan Day look like about Luke Montgomery at that right guard spot? He's very athletic. He's somebody who, uh, to me, is is very skilled in a lot of areas, uh, making the transition to the offensive line here in the last couple of years. Um, we think he's got a very, very high ceiling. And, you know, he's got a list of things that just like everybody has that um, he's going to work on um, this offseason. Um, he, you know, he played tackle last year and, and um, did some good things, and, and we think he can still play some tackle. But we also really want to look at him at guard, one because that's sort of an open spot right now, uh, and then two, we also think with his quickness, he can get on guys quickly and he can bend, and that's very very important in that position. And so, uh, with some of the schemes we're going to be running, we think you know he has the skill set in order to do it. So now he just needs the reps to go, you know, prove he can do it. Uh, I think we'll come up for air in the spring and figure after spring's over and figure out what kind of progress has been made, evaluate it, and then go from there. There are not a ton of positional battles on this year's Ohio State team, largely because virtually everyone is back. They lost a few players of note after last season, but there are a lot of guys back all around that depth chart. Really makes for a promising season, but not necessarily a wide open spring. There are a lot of advantages to bringing back a veteran team, not least of which is this time of year, 
you don't need those veterans don't need as much time, which means you're potentially opening up more time for the younger guys to get practice reps. Yeah, like I mentioned before, there, there, there's guys that are different points of their career on the roster right now. And so um, as time goes on right now, we just want to get as many reps as we can and get these guys going. Uh, but but as time goes on, I think to your point, we have to evaluate some guys. Some guys are, are working on getting things better. You know, let's take a guy like um, you know JT or Tyleek or you know Cody Simon. I mean, they have a, a list of things that they're trying to get done uh, purf- purposefully this spring. Then there's some guys uh, take you know some of the defensive linemen like uh, you know Jason Moore, Caden McDonald, uh, Will Smith. I mean, these guys are trying to you know push to to get on the field and play. Completely different position. Uh, take a guy like Jeremiah Smith, who's a freshman who just literally you know got here about a month or two ago, and is learning the offense for the first time. Um, you know, then you have guys uh, like you know Quinshawn or Will who have played football before, but now they're learning our offense. So all different guys in different points of their career. Um, so we want to get as many reps as we can, but knowing that, um, like you said, there's certain guys that have played a bunch of football here, and you know the idea for them isn't to just get as many reps as we can. The idea for them is to be pointed in what we're trying to get done with them as as the spring goes on. In some of the spots where the starting position is open, the Buckeyes have supplemented through the transfer portal, bringing in veteran players. Quinchon Judkins at running back. That's a spot where they lost a couple guys off the top of their depth chart. Quarterback as well, Will Howard, another spot where they lost last year's starter, Kyle McCord, and they're looking for a new starter this year. So how have those guys, Quinchon Judkins, Will Howard, some of the other transfers they've brought in, Seth McLaughlin, how have those guys been integrated, getting integrated into the program this spring? Well, I think you don't just walk into Ohio State. I've said this before, and just you know think you're going to go become the starting quarterback. It doesn't work that way. There's just too much pride here. What Mick Marotti and our strength staff does here in the off season, there's just a lot that comes with it. You don't just show up in the weight room and then go home. I mean, there's a lot of accountability that happens, and our guys take a lot of pride in that. And so there's only one way to do that, and that's to earn it through respect. Um, but you know, we had our champions meeting yesterday in the first quarter. And we had a bunch of newcomers, you know, um, grayed out as gold, and and that's a big deal, and that's how you earn the respect of the guys around you. Uh, but that's going to be like that for the freshmen as well. You know, the guys who are coming in and um, you know should still be seniors in, in high school are here trying to trying to do that. Now they're younger, and they don't have as much experience as maybe some of the older guys like Will and um, you know Quinchon or Caleb Downs. But uh, but they still have to earn the respect of the team just as just, just as much. And that starts, you know, in the in the, the weight room, but ultimately it's going to matter when we get on the field. You heard earlier Ryan Day talking about how they're going to sort of divide up some of the reps for the five quarterbacks this spring and how they're going to have to try and spread things out among all five of those guys. But when it kind of comes down to it, you figure Will Howard, Devin Brown probably are the favorites, one or both of them are the favorites to win the starting job coming out of the spring or going into the fall. So are those two guys maybe going to get more reps than the other three guys in that quarterback room this spring? At least in the first quarter of the spring. I mean, we're just going to let them go play and just get a bunch of reps and roll them. I think as as that starts to settle a little bit, we'll start to maybe, you know, make sure, you know, guys are, are getting the reps with the ones that need to. But, um, but we're going to let them compete, you know, and, and it's hard for us to say, you know, someone like, you know, Julian Sain or Lincoln or, you know, Air or whoever, hey, you're going to come in here and compete when, you know, the first thing they do is take a bunch of reps with the threes. Now, we want to roll you, whether the, whatever drill it might be, and so that you're getting reps with everybody so you can show what you do. Um, so we'll compete. I mean, we have the, the fortune of having a little bit of time right now. And then as things shake, I think the, the big focus, and this is something we talked to our staff about, is in the spring we want to develop the individual player. As we get closer to the preseason, now we start to really grab on to you know, the schemes and the team and the chemistry of the group. Now, you still need to understand the schemes in the spring and how you fit into them, but that's something that we want to make sure we're, we're you know, developing each individual player right now, and that's the focus more than how does he fit in with the scheme or the chemistry of the offense or defense. Talked earlier a little bit about the offensive line and the intrigue around that one open starting position. you got to remember, they have starting center Carson Hinsman back after last season, but he did not play at all in the Cotton Bowl after just kind of a rough time during practice in December. They brought in transfer center Seth McLaughlin from Alabama. So there's obviously a little bit of a positional battle going there as well. But how has Carson Hinsman progressed over the last couple of months since he did set out that Cotton Bowl? Where do things stand with him right now? And where do things stand with the center battle? Uh, he, he had a really good last couple of months. Um, it was excellent with Mick. I think having that year of experience has really helped him. Um, he's, you know, his numbers in the weight room are very, very good. Um, so... 
you know, the combination of having a year under his belt and um, having a good off season, you know, allows him a great opportunity to go compete this spring. Um, you know, we'll kind of see what it, what it all looks like here. Um, again, the pads aren't on, so with the offensive line, we won't know anything for a little while. Um, but we've seen strides for him, and again, improvement marked with you know, or combined with the fact that he played last year a bunch, and we won a bunch of games with him in there. Uh, that matters. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm fired up to see what he looks like here as we head into the middle of spring. Last up, Ryan Day was asked about this being just an incredibly talented group and just sort of looking around and seeing not only all the guys that came back after last season, but new faces like Jeremiah Smith, Caleb Downs, all this talent, all these incredible football players around. This is a really interesting answer. This is one I coach youth sports. I'm going to be stealing some of this. The, the portion about, about no talent, you know, no talent required stuff, really mattering. This is, this is good stuff. So Ryan Day's asked about, does all this talent get you excited? But the answer goes in kind of a, an interesting place. During our workouts and uh, mat drills or seeing some of the team runs is kind of when um, you think about those type of things. You, you know, you look at the guys and you see the potential and it gets you really excited. But then as much talent as we have, it's going to take the, it's going to be the no talent issues that actually help us win our, and reach our goals. So that's been the focus now. And so once we get on the field, it's you know, that's what you focus on. You know, it isn't seeing Jeremiah run a goal ball like that's great. But like it's you know it's the discipline of knowing what to do. It's the focus. It's running to the ball. It's effort. It's energy. It's all the things that again take no talent. And so um, that's going to be the focus. Uh, it's not about the talent anymore. That was a, that was about the last couple months. Now we need to acquire the skill and discipline it's going to take to go reach our goals, and that's what spring's all about. So that'll do it for this morning's show. We will be back with you a little bit later on on Thursday morning with some reporting from the inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Practice photos, practice video, practice reports, interviews with Ohio State players and coaches. Lots of good stuff coming coming to you on Thursday at BuckeyeHuddle.com and YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle. Make sure you are subscribed to both places. We're going to have a lot of great content coming for you over the next month at BuckeyeHuddle.com as we go through all of spring ball. There's a lot of recruiting news that could be on the verge of popping in the next couple weeks. There's going to be a lot of stuff to talk about. And a great place to talk about it all is on the Huddle Board, presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We hope to see you there. It is a, a great place, great community, lots of stuff to talk about. Really, uh, really a, potentially setting up to be a very, very memorable and historic season of Ohio State football. We hope you will be join us there. Talk about it all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.